Hello world, happy chocolate Christmas. Here's a fun little video whilst you're chewing down the last bits of this year's chocolate and trying not to be sick. It's a fun little exploration of some easter eggs found in programming languages. You might be more used to finding hidden secrets in your games. But there's a few hidden in the tools used to make those games and software as well. Let's take a look at half a dozen of these little tiny eggs. Python, it seems, is not just a programming language, it's also a way of life. The guiding principles of this way are embedded in the language itself. If you just type import this into the Python shell, you're greeted with this massive lump of text. This is the Zen of Python, written by Tim Peters, one of the main contributors to the Python language. If you actually read it, there's some good rules in here, even if you're not a Python programmer. I like how they're both logically sound statements, as you'd expect from a programmer, but they're not absolutes, they're not that kind of rubbish that people like to just repeat at each other trying to sound clever. Like, special cases shouldn't break the rules, but you should remain practical and not stick rigidly to something if it's obviously not going to work or fit. One of the ones that I really like is, now is better than never, although never is often better than right now. I've got a very similar rule I try to follow at times, which is make it work now, make it work better later. Kind of a good way of getting yourself out of a big rabbit hole that you've just fallen into. Talking of programming styles and rules, I was going to something that's caused far more programming holy wars than whether Vi or Emacs is the best editor. Braces. C is my main programming language. As a person who teaches programming to newbies, I can appreciate why Python uses white space, but it is annoying at times. Not as annoying as trying to read code written by a newbie who either thinks they're elite, or they're trying to win some sort of obfuscated programming contest. But still, white space can be annoying all the same. Fear not though, there's a Python module that can help stray C programmers who feel lost amongst this rigid structure. Just type this in at the start of your program. Oh, I guess not. I guess we'll just have to live with indenting code. No obfuscated Python challenges here then. It's not just hipster-friendly model languages that have hidden features. Let's go back to the 80s. Back in the 70s and 80s, the computing world was run by hippies. The cultural rebellion against the previous generations had hit the computer nerds as well. While several key members of computing world were busy inventing a lot of tech we still use today, Microsoft slid into existence by cunningly selling basic interpreters to people. But Microsoft had a bit of a problem. The machines running their basic originated as kit, built by people like us. If I was my age back in the 70s, I'd be hand building a 6502 or Z80 machine from parts instead of, well, I guess I already do that, so there you go. Except earlier Microsoft is quite famous for being quite annoyed by people copying their basic and ripping it off just like they are today. So they decided to hide some little tricks in their basic implementation when it was sold to Commodore to use in their pet machine. If you type wait 6502 1, yes that's a slightly suspicious number isn't it, into a Commodore pet with basic version 2, you'll see the text Microsoft at the top. There's a link here on screen that goes on to quite a long story that explains the whys and hows of this and, supposedly, Bill Gates himself put this in. Cracking on with some more Commodore-based easter eggs, we have this little poke for the C64. Just type this stuff into BASIC after you press run stop restore, and your C64 will print random question marks all over the screen. Nobody seems to know why. Is it intentional and actually running code? Or is this just a coincidence and we've found an interesting way to consistently crash the machine that looks quite fun? I have no idea. Legend has it, the first easter egg was the one hidden inside Adventure for the Atari 2600, where it listed the name of the programmer who created it. There was a bit of a problem back then where programmers were not seen as like real people. The software was a product of a company, so if you'd spent your life making a piece of software, you didn't get any credit. The company took it all. So hiding names in things was quite common. Here's my BBC Micro. Let's open it up. This chip here is the ROM with the operating system on. I'll just pull it out. I 
and then put it in my EEPROM reader. If we dump the contents and go down to location 3C00, we find an area of address space that's normally used by hardware. So this part of the ROM isn't usually read by the machine at all. It's effectively like dead space. And it appears to be full of people's names. I guess this is the software equivalent of etching your signatures into the plastic of the case, like Apple did with the first Macintosh. If you design something and you think it's pretty cool, you want to leave your mark on it. And I guess this is one way of hiding it so that everyone else can't find it. The last one I have is a fine example of that special type of humour only programmers seem to have. Here is the sacred text all C programmers have either owned or at least looked through at some point in their life. It's the C programming language version 2, written by Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kernighan, the creators of the language itself. They wrote C to be able to create Unix by the way, and without that we'd not have the GNU project and eventually Linux. GNU itself is a recursive acronym, which is an acronym that describes itself. Recursion, apart from being a fun game programmers like to play, is also a powerful programming concept, and it's a bit complicated to learn. Sometimes a physical example is needed to help get the point across. So let's get our K&R C book, look on page 269 in the index. If we want to learn about recursion, there's a list of pages to go and look at. Yeah. Programmers have a weird sense of humour. And that kind of brings us to the end of this little fun look at some of the curious things hidden inside programming languages and machines from the past. Unfortunately, modern languages are far too serious and boring to have hidden things like this. They're more likely to have hidden bugs and obscure undefined behaviour lurking in the depths of their instructions instead. Going back to Python for a minute, I'll leave you with one which should be slightly unnerving when you think about how it actually works and kind of the implications for this being in a language. If you open Python and you type in import anti-gravity, it pops up your web browser with a link to this funny XKCD comic, which is kind of funny. But well, just think about that for a minute. This is built into the programming language. This is not something random that you import or load. It's actually part of the Python interpreter. One day XKCD won't be around. If Python still is, someone's going to have to remember this exists and remove it. And we live in a world where malware just likes to randomly pop things open on our screens without our knowledge. Should our languages actually be doing this kind of stuff? So, if you've seen any more or you know of any others, tell me in the comments. It seems these are quite hard things to find. Everyone can find Easter eggs in video games. There's thousands of them. It's almost like a thing that they put in as standard. But in more serious things like computer programming languages and operating systems, it seems that they don't exist. So the ones that you find tend to be very well hidden. So if you know of any, leave them in the comment. Let's have a look. And I'll see you next time.